Hi, and welcome to part four of the Azure Custom Vision webcast series. In this webcast, we're going to look at analyzing image classification using confusion matrices. My name's Alan Smith, and I work for Active Solution based in Stockholm, Sweden. This webcast continues from the other webcasts. We're going to be using much of the code from part three when we looked at the image classification API. We're also going to be using the data sets from part one, the Simpsons data set, and part two, when we created a fast cars data set using the Google image search. But you can feel free to use your own image classification models. The code for this implementation is available on GitHub, and the link's provided below. If you're running through the code, you will need to create a custom vision service, and you'll also need to train and publish a project. You'll need to set the endpoint and prediction key for the service, and project ID and publish name for the project. So let's have a look at what Wikipedia says about confusion matrices. In the field of machine learning, and specifically the problem of statistical classification, a confusion matrix, also known as an error matrix, is a specific table layout that allows a visualization of the performance of an algorithm. So typically what we're using confusion matrices for is to provide a simple and visual representation of the way that a classification algorithm is classifying the input data. We can see the example of a cat and a dog. It's made five correct predictions of cats, three correct predictions of dogs, but three of the cats were predicted as dogs, and two of the dogs were predicted as cats. So let's move to Visual Studio and look at how I've implemented this. The project that I'm using is very similar to the prediction API from the previous webcast, but I've added a new class that's gonna store the results of the image classification as we iterate through the images. I have a list of classes and an array of the predictions. And I've added a write to console method that's going to display the confusion matrix in the console using different colors. Onto the prediction console itself, I've configured the endpoint and the prediction key for my custom vision service, and I've set the project details of the published model in the custom vision API. And I've also set paths pointing to the test data that we're going to be using. We'll be starting out with the fast cars model and then moving on to the Simpsons model. The main method is fairly straightforward. We're going to await on predict test image folders async, and that's going to return a confusion matrix. And then we're going to dump that confusion matrix to the console. I've made some modifications to the predict test image folders async method from the previous webcast. We're still going to iterate through the test folders and create the prediction folders for the output images. We're then going to create a new instance of the confusion matrix, specifying the classes that we're going to be using for classification. We're then going to iterate through the folders and in the folders, we're going to iterate through all of the images. We're then going to set a Boolean variable by comparing the test tag name to the top prediction. So this is going to be true if the image prediction was correct. As in the previous webcast, we're going to output the results to the console in either green or red, depending on whether they were correct or not. And we're going to copy the image to the predicted folder. The code that I've added is going to update the confusion matrix. So remember that predictions was an integer array, and this is initially initialized with zeros. So this code is going to increment the integer at the array using the index of the top prediction and the actual tag name. And that will increment the appropriate integer within the confusion matrix. The getImagePredictionAsync method is exactly the same as the previous webcast. We take in the path of an image file, create a new prediction client, and then we await classify image async passing in the project ID, the published name, and the image stream. And that returns the list of predictions that we analyze. So let's start out testing cars. You can see the test image for cars contains different numbers of images. And I'd really like to have a balanced test set. So the Tesla Model S had 27 images. So I'm going to delete some of the test files So that all four of the cars have 27 test images. And that'll give us more even results in the confusion matrix. Okay, so let's run this in the debugger. So processing the Aston Martin DB9, a lot of correct predictions there. Onto the Lamborghini Aventador. Now the Porsche GT3. And now the Tesla Model S. And here we've got a confusion matrix. Now it's up to you whether you have the actual classes horizontally or vertically. And I've chosen to have them vertically. 
So for the Aston Martin DB9, 22 of the 27 images were correctly predicted, but five of them were predicted as a Tesla Model S. And if we move up in the console, we can see that that was correct. We've got five Tesla Model S predictions in the output. For the Lamborghini Aventador, we got 24 correct, but three of them were predicted as a Porsche GT3. For the Porsche GT3, we got 21 correct, and it predicted two of them as Aston Martins, one as a Lamborghini Aventador, and three as Tesla Model S's. The Tesla Model S was the least accurate, only 17 predictions, with five predicted Aston Martins, three Aventadors, and two GT3s. So let's move on and look at the Simpsons dataset. Again, I've got a balanced set of test images. I've got 50 images for each of the five classes. I'm going to comment out the fast car settings and comment in the Simpsons settings. And we'll run the application again. I'll speed up the video so this runs a bit quicker. So processing Bart Simpson, processing Homer, processing Lisa, Maggie, and last but not least, Marge. And here we can see the confusion matrix for the Simpsons. Remember that there was 50 test images, and we can already see that this model is less accurate than the fast cars model. We didn't get any Bart's predicted as Homer's, but 18 of them were predicted as Lisa. Homer Simpson also had quite a large number of images predicted as Lisa. Lisa and Maggie seemed to be very accurate with 42 and 45. And for Marge Simpson, she was sometimes predicted as Bart, Homer, Lisa and Maggie. So we can see that the confusion matrix gives us a really nice way of being able to easily visualize the types of classifications that an image classification model are making. In future webcasts, we'll look at making more accurate models by providing more test images and also by using advanced training where we can really leverage the power and scalability of the Azor Custom Vision service. My name's Alan Smith, and I work as a developer, trainer, mentor, and evangelist for Active Solution in Stockholm, Sweden. I'm an Azor MVP, and I speak at many international conferences. I'm also involved in the organization of the Cloud Burst Conference and the AI Burst Conference, hosted in Stockholm. I specialize in delivering classroom and on-site training in the Microsoft Azor and AI technologies. I also deliver remote training and mentoring. I host seminars and workshops for companies. I've authored a number of Pluralsight courses, and I also speak at conferences. If you're interested in any of the above, feel free to contact me on cloudcast.net at gmail.com.